Guys, one of the long-awaited changes finally arrived, and that is the buff to the Scythe of Vitter. I'm a little late on this one, but a little background, Jagex wrote a blog, a big one, called Project Rebalance last December, in which they announced various possible balancing changes going forward to items like the Scythe, Fang, and other aspects of the game, even like skills such as agility. I did cover this blog in full in a previous video. Scythe was one of the most pressing bouncing changes as many consider it too expensive or too niche to use and it's considered like the mega rare weapon of melee just like the T-Bone the Shadow whereas those other two weapons have no problem being useful. Jagus's initial buffing pitch in the blog for the Scythe was well received and came into the game pretty soon after. So what is the buff to the Scythe? Actually it is multiple buffs. The first simple one gave the Scythe of Vitter an extra 15 slash accuracy, which is quite substantial. For example, if I were to use the Scythe on a notably tanky boss like the new Duke Succulus boss, you would gain up to 7% extra DPS increase. However, on low defense monsters like the new Scurrious Rat boss or bosses whose defense has been lowered to near zero like Specking Maiden at race 2 with BGS and Warhammer, the accuracy boost in those cases will not provide much additional DPS. The next buff is that the Scythe of Vitter will now use 2 blood runes per attack instead of 3, which means Scythe will now use 33% less blood runes going forward. Now the Scythe is cheaper than the Shao Tumikin per attack. It's 650 GP with the Scythe versus 1000 GP with the Shao Tumikin. Additionally, if you miss completely, that attack will no longer use a charge, which means on tanky bosses, you're gonna save even more blood runes. Overall, the Scythe became a bit stronger and massively cheaper to use. This means that you can typically profit in more places with a Scythe from normal players and also just profit more in general. For iron players, you can justify using the Scythe at more places due to less blood rune use. I'm going to show you which bosses the Scythe excels at nowadays. You can also use the Scythe though on regular NPCs that are 3x3 tiles or larger like Gargoyles or Black Demons as is the best weapon for these kind of NPCs too, but I highly would not recommend it unless you are absolutely too rich for your own good. You might be wondering what are the bosses that the Scythe absolutely dominates at. I'm gonna list them right here. We got Duke Succulus, we got Fordorvis, we have all the bosses in Theater of Blood Raids 2, we have some of the bosses in Chambers of Xerix like Tecton, Home Left Hand, and Vanguards to a degree. You have Nightmare and the Fosani version, except you gotta use Crush Style on this one. You also have Dagonal Supreme, Dermonucleus Smoke Devil, Cerberus, Abyssal Sire, Grotesque Guardian, Seracnus, Scurrius. The buff Scythe is best to slot every boss listed here, with a few exceptions. There's also some key points you should note. All the bosses with the Scythe here are straightforward to use, except for some scenarios in Raids 1, which I will explain more in depth later. I'm gonna start off with Duke Succulus, as I've been camping Duke a lot recently with the buff. In an attempt to get the Duke pet and thus green logging this boss, you will see my Duke progress as well in this video. Scythe at Duke is the best weapon available, hands down. The next best thing is the Soul Reaper Axe. Thanks to the 15 accuracy slash buff to the Scythe, it is quite better than it was pre-update at Duke, particularly if you do not land a good BGS spec. I noticed that on kills where I didn't land a good BGS, the Scythe is 10 to 20 seconds faster than before. With a good BGS spec, the scythe kill times are around like 1 minute and 40, which is slightly better than what I had before. Holy, that was so fast. Oh, new PB, let's go. Yeah, I knew that was fast. Nice. 121. You'll see in the earlier clips that I did bring my Fang with me, and that's because the update to the scythe and the Fang didn't happen yet. So at the time, the Fang still has the 2x slash accuracy roll, making it really good here. Now, the Fang never actually beat the Scythe no matter what, even if I like missed the BGS. But if I'd missed the BGS, the Fang wasn't that much worse than the Scythe. And that means I could just use it and not waste my blood runes. Before, it was 3 blood runes per hit, remember that. So it was nice to bring it. But yeah, nowadays, do not bring the Fang. It's basically just not useful at Duke at all. Oh, speaking of Virtus, I just got a Virtus top. <laughs> Okay, there you go. Nice. 1 HP. Nice, it died. Oh, Dragon Arrow Tips. Yes, I did perfect on that. Dragon Arrow Tips. 
Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna risk it. Out of order. Everything is a bit out of order. Oh, yes, it was worth not risking. Perfect Dran arrows. Oh. Bruh. No, the Dran plate leaks. Uh, I, I gotta pick it up later, though. We have to do this later. I don't get the dry leg drops often at all. So what I do is I just leave it on the ground until the very end of the trip. Because if I pick them up now, I'm going to wait actually a lot. And my run energy will go away a lot faster. So we save it for the end. Oh, okay. Right, we got a Virtus row bottom. I'll take that. Row. Oh. Okay, I just lost the mill because I got six hour log. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Damn, okay, yeah, the scythe is definitely... I'm already feeling it, man. That 15 accuracy boost. So now that they added 15 slash, that's, uh, according to Jax, it's 7% more DPS with the scythe on tanky monsters like this. Duke is definitely the definition of tanky. Three kills where I absolutely landed like nothing on my BGS. And it's still two minutes. Approximately two minutes. So that's good. Because sometimes, man, I can go to like 220 even. So it's a good. Definitely a noticeable. That 7%, you know, difference is definitely noticeable. So I just hit triple zero there. So that means I did not use a single blood rune. With today's effects. Uh, today's update, I mean. We hit a thousand kills though. If you guys didn't know, there are multiple ways to actually wake up Duke. You can do the normal make two vials and use it at the boss, or you can actually use 40 mushroom dust. Any of them will do and wake up the boss. So I typically do the 40 mushroom dust just cause it is very little run energy. I basically don't use stamps unless it's a really long trip, but the only downside is that this method is definitely more skill required and it definitely is a lot more clicking so if you're not a fan of clicking a lot don't do this method but it is faster if you do it right and saves a lot of stamina so i do like that yeah the rhythm is really good now because like i'm never getting like too much spec it's always just like enough now For every other kill i have like one backup bgs yep it's so fast once you learn how to do it like take perfect i guess it's actually easier doing a tick perfect once you get it down. That was a really good trip. But yeah, I did manage to get almost 30 kills an hour. Damn. All right. What is this trip? Though? It's, it was a long one. It's a long one. That's for sure. Ooh, not bad. Like a five mil trip. Oh, I ruined the perfect. Oh, yo. Okay. Nice. We got another uh, fistage. I think we are... I want to say, yeah, I'm, I'm probably close to Ray for a second, huh? Hey. It's cool to at least have a dupe, you know? A dupe ring is not bad. Yes. There we go. Another Magus ring. Now we have a dupe. Let's see. Do I have dupes for all the rings now? Oh, no. I don't have a dupe for Builder, but I might. I might one day. <clears throat> that was a really good trip though 31 kills an hour is probably my top speed because i was landing like every bgs spec pretty much i guess that's as good as it gets for me holy shit i have so many raw sharks actually uh, i guess a lot of this just came from freaking uh what do you call it for uh, and also i was planning on cooking manta rays uh, i still have a lot of sharks but my manta rays are uh yeah i don't even know where they are i have none so yeah, it's time to actually cook all of this and uh, restock. Oh, yay. We got a 50 mil cooking. All right. Messed up this kill, unfortunately. No way. I got another Eye of Duke. Oh, my God. That's like my fifth one. Want to be a good draw, please? Oh, Dragon Plate Lakes. Oh, you got a pet. <laughs> Yo, okay. It didn't matter. Didn't matter about the perfect kill. Holy, we got lucky on this pet let's go okay hell yeah nice nice all right not the most fun boss so it is nice to get lucky on uh, on this one. Ooh, 35 damn that's crazy nice nice we got the bulldog of osrs basically 
Now let's talk about another tanky boss. Bardorvis with buff sight feels super nice. This boss is tanky too and its defense cannot be lowered through weapons like BGS. Instead, its defense gradually goes down as his hit point goes down. However, his defense is still pretty high even towards the end, so the 15 slash accuracy boost is super noticeable the whole fight. I managed to get 36 kills an hour on my first try with the buff scythe, which is really goddamn good. That's pretty much the same kills per hour I was getting with the soul reaper axe. I will say though, the scythe is way easier to use than the soul reaper axe here, so that is a plus. However, the soul reaper axe is definitely cheaper to buy and also to use here. Just like the side buff, the Soul Reaper Axe is also getting its own buff soon, most likely to make it less annoying to use, so that will probably change in the Axe's favor, since the Scythe can only land 2 hits per swing as Vardorvis is a 2x2 two two tile NPC. But as of right now, I would say the new Scythe is basically tied with Soul Reaper Axe for best in slot at Vardorvis. While I was working on some slayer related goals, I happened to get a Fardorvis boss task, which is incredibly rare, so I didn't want to waste this chance, and I tried to go for a PB with this task. So, you get to see the Scythe and Soul Reaper Axe in maximum action. Enjoy! Oh yes, yes, let's go! A no claw! Bro, how do you miss? Okay, it's okay. Whatever, whatever. Let's see if the axe pulls through. Okay, okay, okay. Axe is going in. Okay, axe. Yes. What's up? What's up? How are we doing? Keep going. Keep going. Holy shit, axe. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go. Oh my god, axe. Please, please. Let's go. Yo, that's gotta be it. That's gotta be it. That's gotta be it. Yo, 38 seconds. Let's fucking go. Woo, baby. Holy shit. It took so long for this axe to, to pull through. Next, let's talk about some raids. Scythe at Theater of Blood Raids 2 is still the best weapon at every boss there. However, bosses like Maiden and Sarpis, you're not going to notice much of a difference as players will usually lower their defense to zero. Nilo King Blow is also naturally low defense, so there's not much difference there. However, at Sodaseg and Furzeg Phase 2, whom are both quite tanky, the newly buffed Scythe will definitely feel stronger than before. For those of you that are not seasoned at Theater of Blood, I do recommend that if you're going to melee the Sarpis boss with the Scythe, you should at least learn the Fortech melee run method so you can minimize the poison splats at Phase 2 or else you're going to int your teammates. There's also the 5 tick Scythe method, but it's a lot harder, but it is the best damage. Let's talk about the other raids where the Scythe is good at. Scythe at Chambers of Zerg is considered best in slot, but with some caveats. Due to the fast differences between group raiding and solo raiding, and also big differences in the regular version of raids versus the challenge mode version of Chambers. First, I'm going to talk about doing Chambers in teams for both normal and challenge mode, as most people will be doing them in groups. The Scythe is absolutely godly in group chambers of all kinds, especially on Tekton and Ohm Mainly Hand. The reason is that in group raids, it's super likely you'll have enough people using hammers and BGSs to lower Tekton and Ohm's Mainly Hand defense to near zero. Any instance, the Scythe can hit a large target with little defense. Nothing is going to compete with it, as you can hit over 80s and you'll see a ton of 40s. Scything Vanguards is not as broken though because they're typically tankier to slash, but it can still pop off occasionally in the team vanguards setting. Now I'm going to talk about solo chambers. First, we got to talk about normal solo chambers, as that is really different from the challenge mode version. Scythe is pretty reliable on Tekton or Melee Hand in the regular version. Regular Cox version's defense of these bosses are not so high, so that the Scythe can still be considered best in slot reliably, especially if you land your defense reductions and you're using the efficient Scythe methods like 5 tick melee tecton and 3 scythe hits using 4 to 1 at the old melee hand, or even the optimal world scythe strategy. But if you already know this stuff, you probably don't even have to watch this video for the most part. Now, let's talk about vanguards. You can actually scythe normal vanguards, but you have to be really careful because it's super easy to reset. If you are max potted using piety, it's pretty much going to reset. So you basically would have to turn one of those off if you want to tackle vanguards, at least for the first 70%, because then anything after 30% doesn't matter because they can't reset anymore. 
Now let's talk about solo challenge mode chambers. Scythe won't be nearly as reliable in challenge mode coxels versus the regular coxels because all the CM bosses defenses are so much higher. If you do not land a good defense reduction at Tecton or Ohm, for example, the kill times are going to wildly fluctuate. Even a 15 accuracy buff is not going to change the inconsistency of the scythe here only a little bit. Sometimes it will take an extra minute or more to clear Tecton and Ohm hands if you don't land your defense reductions. At Challenge Mode Vanguards, it's especially bad. Scythe is super inconsistent there. The ranged Vanguard is pretty tanky to the Slash style in the CM version. The Fang is definitely way more reliable. I only recommend solo CM costs with the Scythe if you're going for competitive speed run times, and I mean like way faster than GM times, in my opinion. Scythe has the potential to give you the fastest kill times occasionally when you get lucky and you hit hard. Keep in mind speed running is not worth doing for drops or money as you're going to be resetting a lot of raids rather than completing every raid you do. If you are going for purple and money in solo challenge mode raids, I super recommend using a Fang at Tecton and Vanguards instead of the Scythe and Dragon Hunter Lance at Ohm, as your kill times will be super consistent due to both the Fang and Lance being way more accurate. Also, players like to bring a Blood Fairy for Soul Sims, but if you use a Scythe, the Blood Fairy charges will drain close to three times faster than something else like a Lance due to his multiple hit splats. This will absolutely cut into your profits and not be very iron friendly either. So keep that in mind when it comes to the Blood Fairy and what weapons you use. In summary, I don't recommend Scythe at Solciums if you're going for drops and consistent raids. I only recommend Scythe at Solciums for those that really know what they're doing and are specifically going for extremely fast times. Here's a table to simplify when the Scythe is recommended at Cox. Let's talk about Nightmare Boss including the Fosani aka Har version. Scythe at Nightmare has not changed much offensively, but it is still the best weapon with Inquisitor here. Scythe didn't change offensively because you will be using Crush Style, and the Scythe Crush Style did not get buffed at all, only the Slash did. However, you're still going to save over 33% Blood Runes after this update. Kill times are typically 8 minutes with Best and Slot gear, so you're going to get around 6-8 to eight kills an hour. It really depends on if you choose to bring supplies to do more than one kill trip. And of course, with worse gear, expect a lot less. Keep in mind, if you don't have Inquisitor set, the Inquisitor Mace will actually be the Scythe here. Now, we're going to cover an old boss called Dagonaut Supreme. The Scythe absolutely destroys this guy as he's pretty low defense. And often, you'll be on Slayer Tasks as well when fighting this boss. Kill times definitely hasn't changed much at all as this boss is a perfect example of a low defense large monster. Bosses like this are where the Scythe displays its maximum damage potential though. Now we're going to talk about Slayer bosses. It turns out the Scythe is really good at a lot of them. The buff Scythe is absolutely amazing at the Thermonuclear Smoke Devil boss. I've been killing this guy a lot trying to re-greenlog this boss as they added a jar of smoke sometime I got the pet. But this gave me a lot of opportunity to test out both the Shadow and the Scythe to see which is the king here. Both the Shadow and the Scythe got me over 100 kills an hour, but the Scythe managed a few more additional kills per hour. Remember, I mentioned that the Scythe now costs a lot less GP and runes per hit than the Shadow, so that's another plus over the Shadow. For the Scythe method, you can do Step Under Method to reduce the boss's damage, or if you're a normal count, you can bring Ancient Brews or Prayer Potions and just spam Redemption for a very chill fight. Simply drink a Prayer Dose every time your Redemption runs out. Ancient Brews, though, are way cheaper, so I recommend using that on a normal count over Prayer Potions and it provides enough prayer to reliably spam redemption anyways. There is one annoying thing about the scythe here is that the scythe is a mobbing item so it can accidentally tag one of the minions that walk across you when you find the boss. Easy fix though, just pray range and kill the boss and then go to exit quickly and go back to the boss. And you should be able to get there on spawn time without wasting really any time. But I swear Jagex said they were fixing that a long time ago and I guess they just never fix the scythe mobbing on the boss exclusively when it's fighting a boss. Next is Cerberus. The buff scythe is noticeably better now here and it is the best weapon here hands down. On my first try back I managed to get over 50 kills an hour at this place which was a few more kills per hour than when I last did this boss with the scythe although I didn't have an ultra ring before so that definitely helped speed up a lot of my kills too. Inquisitor is dead content nowadays, especially here because you'll always use Slash on this boss with a Scythe. 
This works out really well anyways because Torva and Bandos will reduce a lot of damage that you will take from Cerberus and that means you don't have to rely on the Blood Fairy to stay for a long time. I highly recommend the step under Method of Cerberus as it will massively reduce his attack frequency including Ghost Specials. This method involves doing two hits and immediately going under the boss with pretty much any weapon. As long as you are under him, he cannot do further attacks. Wait for your weapon cooldown to be almost over and then repeat two more attacks and then go under the boss again. Now we're going to cover Abyssal Sire. I would say the Scythe is the best weapon at the boss. However, the fence cannot be meleeed, so you need to bring either a ranged weapon like Bofa or a magic setup like Shadow or Sang. Aside from that though, the Scythe will typically rinse this boss, especially if you land a hammer or a good BGS. Occasionally, you will encounter some slow kills that will damage you quite a bit, so make sure you bring some food or have Blood Barrage with you if you're using a mage setup as a side. The mage side switch for Scythe is super nice and recommended if you want to maximize trips with the Scythe. Comboing Sang or Shadow for vents and using Blood Barrage to last hit the vents typically keeps you going. On the super slow kills I mentioned, you can cast Blood Barrage or two on Phase 3 Scions to maintain HP. This method requires some stamina and prayer potions, but it is the fastest method. Also, Light Bear is really good during vents, so you can make sure you have a spec pretty much every kill. However, the POH method reset every kill is fine too, but it is a bit slower. Way more chill though. Compared to last time, I got several more kills an hour from like 28, 29 to 34 kills on my first try. The difference now is I have the mage switch with shadow for vents and healing with blood barrage, so I no longer have to teleport to my house every kill. The scythe buff alone would most likely account for an extra kill or two realistically. Last layer boss with the scythe is grotesque guardian. Scythe is disgustingly strong on dust the melee part of the fight and it's the best weapon for him. There is not much to say about using the scythe here because it's consistently powerful and he is naturally low defense. Keep in mind that this boss is two bosses, so you'll still need to bring a good range switch for Dawn, as you can only range that part of the fight. I have two more easy bosses to cover. The second and last is Seracnus. Scythe is the best weapon here at Seracnus. I recommend wearing some good hybrid top and bottom like Missouri or Karos to tank the magic spider minions. Nowadays, you can bring the Ring of Stone with you to skip the web mechanic, saving you a lot of time per kill. Simply put the Ring of Stone on when you get stuck by the web, and it will cancel the web for you. Jagus probably knows about the Ring of Stone. It's been around for quite a while now, but they don't seem to care. So go ahead and use it. This boss will typically melt with the Scythe. And lastly, we have Scurrius, the new rat boss. It is by far the easiest boss on this list. The Scurrius boss can use all three styles, but their attacks is super slow. So the magic and range can be prayed against by simply looking at the incoming visual attack. Typically, you will pray melee unless you see the visual displaying a non-melee attack. You can easily do over one kill a minute with the scythe here and you will really miss hits here. You will see some of the biggest numbers you've ever seen in any uh, instance of RuneScape. Alright, that's about it. As you can see, the buff scythe is way more affordable now to use and you can spam it without feeling like you're losing money. And there's lots of bosses to use it at too. So have some fun with it and good luck to those of you trying to get one. You made it all the way to the end though, consider giving this video a like. And also news, we got Valamar content coming out. So that's probably going to be in the next part of this video. So I hope you guys enjoy some new spicy content.